Hello, PJ. Hi, Rob, how are you? Three, two, one. Hello, PJ, how are you? I'm good. There's a bit of a weird start there, but yeah, how's your day going? Oh, not too bad. We got up early to uh, go out for our first shop. Uh, so we got to the supermarket for our click and collect when it was uh, before anybody else was there. So we've had our morning outing. Great. Excellent. Um, OK, let's not beat about the bush. You very kindly agreed to come on my channel and, t and talk about a condition um, that you have. Um, first of all, I just want to say that um, PJ or Peter John is I've known literally all my life because he's my uncle. Um, I've never heard him once complain about the condition he has. I've never heard him even mention it unless asked about it. He's so always very stoic and, and even and has even run marathons, falling on his face and getting blood all over his face and then being chased by paramedics through the finishing tape. So this is not a professional victim we're talking to. That's why I'm particularly grateful that he's, uh, that he's agreed to, to come on and, um, and open up. Uh, how, was, how was doing the marathon for you? How did you find the marathon? Um, a few emotions there, Rob. It was exhilarating. It was exhausting. It was emotional. There was a wide range of emotions there. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, the, I thoroughly enjoyed the first London one, despite the fall. The second one, four years later, I realised that I was four years older and I couldn't uh, recreate <laughs> the kind of fitness that I'd come to expect in my youth. So, um, All right. so yeah, yeah, it, it was more tiring than the second one. And we're, and we're talking today about um, MS. Could you please tell, tell our listeners what MS stands for and, 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 what it, and what the condition is? Okay. MS stands for multiple sclerosis. It's uh, basically it's a neurological condition. Uh, okay. is, it is basically where messages from the brain don't get down to the rest of your, your body. Basically, okay. there are lesions on, the, um, on, your, on your spine that stop the messages coming down uh, properly. And so when you, you think you're telling your hands to pick something up or your legs to move somewhere, the messages don't get down properly and they do something totally different. Sometimes you'll have warning of that and you know it's going to happen and you can make allowances for it. Other times it comes up on you and you'll pick something up and you don't know that your next message isn't going to get to your hand and you'll drop it. So it's a bit frustrating like that. You don't know how it's going to affect you. Could you give an everyday example of when it's most deceptive? Difficult because it, it's different for different people. Let me right. just say, I'm very lucky. I've had MS for about nearly 35 years, but I've never had a very severe case of it, Rob. Um, a lot of people are a lot worse off than me and have it far more severely. MS is not a one-size-fits-all. It's like a lot of conditions, depending on the individual and the strain of the condition, uh, the severity of it, it affects people different ways. As I, I've been very lucky in the 30 odd years that I've uh, been diagnosed with it, that I've been able to continue a pretty normal uh, life, reactive yeah. life. It's not affecting me that drastically. Other people are far worse off than me, so I don't want to make light of it. A lot of people are in wheelchairs, limp around a lot worse, on crutches. I find the lucky stars. People say to me when they hear, I've got MS. They say, oh, how unlucky, what a shame for you. That's terrible. I say, mm. well, no, it isn't. I'm very lucky compared to how the situation that a lot of people are in. So I don't feel sorry for myself. I feel less in a way that it could be a lot worse than it isn't wrong. Yeah, well, that's why I invited you on, because I knew you wouldn't be, um, I know your, your attitude to it. So, so in terms of your own personal experience, you, you just outlined how there's, there's, there's a continuum of, um, of severity. Yeah. Um, for people out there with any kind of chronic pain or nervous condition, um, for you, what's been the biggest psychological challenge over the years? Difficult to answer that one, Rob, because over the years, I say 30-odd years that I've had it, and during those 30-odd 30, 30 years, 
I've had highs, I've had lows, I've had loads of different um, severities of the condition. Yeah. And depending on how bad I felt, depends on how it's affected my psychological um, feeling, feelings towards it. I'm very lucky. I'm a glass half full kind of person. In I any, don't know. Not yeah. just with condition, but in any situation. Um, and a lot of the effects of the condition can be psychological. You know, if you think things are going to be bad, then they will be bad. They tend to be bad or worse. If you think things are going to be good, then you'll talk yourself into finding the best aspects of them. So it's at any point during the 30 odd years, no matter how I felt, I've tried to stay positive. I've tried to look at the best things of it. I've tried to think there are a lot of people worse off than me. I know that's not always a good thing to think, but there are. So I think to myself, thank you, lucky stars. You're a lot luckier than most. So therefore, I will, I will be on more of a high. You've got to try and stay positive with any things in life, I think. not just MS, with relationships, with whatever. Rob. If you think bad, then you drift downwards. If you think good, surround yourself with positive people, you tend to be psychologically better off and through that psychological feeling and physically. Yeah, mind over do you, mind. Think having, do you think having something pulling you down, so to speak, even if it is mildly often, um, gives you, uh, it gives you a, a renewed, constant, fresh appreciation of things? Like, I've got this, but it could be a lot worse. Does that kind of echo through in the back of your mind a lot? Yes, it does. But whether it echoes in my mind more than anybody else's, I don't know. That doesn't necessarily need to be to do with the condition. I think we're all in that situation. And I'm a great believer if, if something's bad, if something looks depressing, something hard work. I don't know whether I've got this from um, one of your blogs or from the, the way you are or the way the other people are. If things are bad, block them out for a minute, go away, turn on to something else come back to it later on, and then you realise that the things that are bad could drag you down. And again, that's not just MS, that's life, isn't it? Yeah, um, that's for sure. Maybe, maybe with MS, I've had to face that a few more times. I don't know, it's difficult to say, because it's, it's like this continuum, isn't it? Sliding doors thing. We don't know what that parallel universe is. Yeah. So what, um, you touched on this a, a bit already, I guess, but what would what are your what are your best defense mechanisms for the psychological strain of um of a mess I, I met you said glass half full what else okay it helps to surround yourself with people that are positive um yeah. if i were by myself it would be a lot harder yeah i work in an environment where there's a lot of people so that helps but the most important thing is my personal life. I'm married to somebody who keeps me active, keeps me going, keeps me positive. Linda's a very positive person. Um, yes. Helps. I've got a family. You need to stay positive for your family. I remember going back a long time, I've got a fear of flying. Um, right. When the kids were grown up, I would have been on planes with them and I've been a bit nervous when they were young. I can't be nervous because that's going to show to them. So I'll All put right. on that and to have somebody or a family or other people around that you need to put on a front for sometimes it helps you because then you realize it isn't a problem what you're worried about you're not putting on being happy and positive it is better than it, you thought it was yeah, so, yeah just having just having other people around you um inspires you to say different things and walk a different way and and jokes pop into your head that you wouldn't there'd be no reason to if there was no one else there you know Okay, yeah, so... And that's not being a different person than you actually are. It's just bringing out um, a true person, do you think? Okay, right, yeah. So, what, what if you had to give... If you had, um, if you had five seconds with, with someone suffering from MS who was younger, say in their 20s, at the same sort of level as you, and they're looking at you thinking, oh, wow, if he can... He can be in such in such um, spick and span condition when I get to um, 
60. 25 or whatever you are. Um, <laughs> but I can too. So what, what, would, what aphorisms or one piece of advice would you give to someone with, specifically with um, multiple sclerosis? Because like you say, there's, they might have just found out they've got it and they've, on, they've only seen people on crutches representing the condition and, and, and be sort of terrified. So, yeah, could you unpack that a bit, please? What would you, words of encouragement for a young MS patient? Yeah, because I, I can empathise with that because I remember all those years ago when I was in hospital and I was first told that I had MS. It was devastating because you don't know what it is. You've heard of MS, but mm. you've not, unless you need to, you've not looked at it to find out what it is and how it's going to affect people. And that was the situation I was in. Um, and I was devastated. I would yeah. say to anyone in the situation, look beyond that. Look for tomorrow. And tomorrow is better than today. And um, it can be if you make it. So. Now, difficult with any condition, as I said earlier, we're not all at the same, have the same strain, the same yeah. severity. So I can't turn around to somebody and say, I know you're going to be exactly the same as me, because you might not be. All I can say, I feel that looking at things positively helped me or can help me and can help anybody else. Right. So <clears throat> I remember hearing about um, a soldier who'd been, he was a prisoner of war, an American soldier, and he'd had um, every bone in his body broken. That was, his, that was his torture or part of his torture. And he was there for years. And he used to give motivational speaks on um, motivational talks on how it's all about attitude. So yeah, there's some serious, uh, <laughs> some serious force backing up, backing up what you're saying there. Could you just unpack a little bit more? So is MS not to simplify it? Essentially, the brain cross firing. Yes, yes, it is basically. Now, what we've talked about so far, Rob, um, has been the personal psychological positive aspects and um, linked to that we haven't talked about medication and that is very important because i don't okay. think well i know i couldn't have got where i am just with a positive attitude i've yeah. needed to have medication along the way and treatments and physiotherapy and good specialist nurses help me through it and that's vital you can't do it by yourself whether it's you need family you need medication you need the nurses, you do need something else. So it isn't all about positive mental attitude. You know, there's a lot of medication treatments and drugs out there, and different ones are good for different people. And you need to explore what's right for you. Do you might, um, could you list some of those medications that, are, that are, say, the top five that are, that are thrown at people with the condition? Or not, not thrown out, but given? Well, the ones, the ones <clears throat> that I've I started with beta interferons, which was an injection uh, that I gave myself. Then I went on to when I started having problems with the injection sites and the psychological aspects of sticking needles into myself every week. I moved on to um, uh, easier uh, injections, just like um, a diabetic um, EpiPen thing. And that was with a treatment called Rebif. Then I moved away from that altogether and moved on to tablet forms. Um, I'm currently on a medication called Ocrevus. Oh, sorry, no, I know I've done tablet forms. Um, and more recently, I went off those just to give myself a rest from my drugs. Yeah. Then, unfortunately, last year I had another relapse after about 15 years, first one about 15 years, and that's because I've been on no medication for about 15 months. Um, now I'm on a, a new drug called Ocrevus which is a, an infusion, a, a drip that I'm put on for about six hours and I have that once a year. Uh, that's just something you are trial. So those are the medications I've had. There's an awful lot out there, depending on the kind of person you are, your age, a lot of factors. And my MS specialist went through the options for me, gave me their advice, asked my preferences, and we worked through what would be best for me. And then you've got to right. go on the, the actual treatment to find out whether it's um, whether it is good. Now, as I, I said did. before, 
there's, there's no parallel universe to see whether you'd be better off on something else. You know, you go and you try, and if it suits you, you carry on with it. Yeah, it either works like a charm or gets you sectioned. Um, <laughs> there, there are a lot of treatments out there to try. So what I'd say to somebody, if something doesn't work, there are other things to try. And I'm sure anybody else going through this would have an MS specialist say exactly the same thing to them. How, how old are you when you did your last marathon? Um, it was 2012. Oh, that's easy, isn't it? It's, uh, I'll be 50. So anyone out there who's <clears throat> in their 20s or 30s or, or teens or 40s or 50s even and, and doesn't have MS, you look at a man who did a marathon with MS. So if you're, if you're saying to yourself, oh, I can't get up and do a five-minute jog or a 10-minute jog, then um, your glass is half empty, as, <laughs> as um, some might say. Right, so... One question I've got to ask you, who is the better football, by which I mean soccer, uh, for US viewers, who's the better soccer team? Tottenham Hotspur, the very prestigious team based in North London, or the Leicester Pink Kitty Blind Girl Guide Toddler FC? At the moment, the Leicester Pretty Girl Guides whatever it is FC. Why is that? Because we haven't played for months, we're probably all unfit, uh, overweight, and I'd expect the girl guys to be taking more care, better care of themselves. Okay, are you talking about Tottenham or you and me? <laughs> nice one. Okay, so the answer to that is the Leicester Pink Kitty Blind Guide Girls Toddler FC. Okay, moving swiftly on. What are the two most important <laughs> The two most important things you've learned in life? Empathy. Can you unpack that? Yeah, yeah. Try and walk the path that somebody else is walking before you tell them that it's better to walk on your path, right? Don't judge people without knowing them. Right? A lot of us do that. You see people on telly doing it, politicians do it. No, 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 no. Understand people. So yeah. that's a big lesson I would say to anybody. Um, humility. Don't big yourself up, right? You're not. One of you're not things as, about me. One of the best things about me is is my humility, <laughs> which comes out in spades. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your uh, serious answer. Why humility? Don't try and be too big because you're not. Right? You, you might think you're clever. You might think you're important. <laughs> but are you real? Just in your sphere, you might be. But yeah. in the whole sphere of things, you're probably nothing at all. Right? So... <laughs> sorry, go on. <laughs> I'm sorry to break that to you. <laughs> no, really. It, it's just, unless you're Donald Trump, <laughs> then you don't need to be that uh, that important and that clever. I remember Stephen Fry saying about Donald Trump, um, <laughs> what he wants is everyone talking about him, and that's just what he's going to get. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Well, um, Pete, I'd love to chat to you again sometime. Um, we could we could talk about we could talk about something else. Um, so. Any, any last positive words of motivation or wisdom, especially in the lot, this lockdown period? We're recording this on, is it May 13th today? I've lost track of the yeah, days. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's Wednesday. It's, it's very hard, isn't it? Because it's just like... So it's May 13th. Down. There's rumours of UK lockdown being lifted. But there's rumours of false hope. There's rumours of in and out of lockdown. Don't know where, what it's like where you are. but um, So, yeah, bearing that in mind, to, to anyone with any chronic chronic conditions... What would, you, what would you say? Okay. Well, it's still similar to the lockdown situation because I think with the messages that come out from um, government and whatever on the telly, we tend to interpret them the way we want to interpret them, right? For our own benefit. I want to do this, so I'm going to make that message fit what I want. Likewise, with a medical condition and a diagnosis, it's very easy to say, oh, yeah, I hear what you say. But I think, yeah, this is the way I'm going to deal with it. Yeah, sometimes your own personal way of doing things 
is good because you know your body and the way you want to do things best. But you still got to listen to the experts and realize yeah. that no matter what you think you want to do, someone else somewhere should be saying, this is what's good for people with your condition and they know better than you. So listen they to people. It is a shame that the experts, like the leader of the WHO, um, are often phenomenally corrupt. Like he, he was he was fired from the Ethiopian government three times, and now he's the World Health Organization leader um, in bed with China. And, and there's, there's footage of him saying, this is the only thing I'm going to say about this, but there's footage of him, of a journalist saying, um, Taiwan's done a good job, hasn't it? And um, he, the WHO, the World Health Organization leader, says, yeah, China's done a great job. And the journalist's like, oh, can you just mention, comment on Taiwan? Because they're, they're like England, they're a small island, and they've handled this incredibly well. And he, <laughs> the guy's like, um, yeah, China's done very well. Next question. So we're in a strange, strange era where no one knows who to trust authority-wise. So it's good to get words and motivation from, um, from, uh, from a humble gent like yourself, um, <laughs> living, living on the ground in a... In a, in a Somebody detached terrorist house like the rest of us, um, not completely removed from from reality in the community like the media and the politicians. <laughs> the politicians are. Hey, Pete, thanks for sharing your thoughts and wisdom and, and personal experience on MS. I know it can't have been easy for you to talk um, so openly about it. Um, we will talk again soon if you'd like. That's not a problem, mate. I hope this is what has been useful and helpful to somebody out there. I'm sure it'll be very helpful to, pe to people with, with, to everyone, hopefully, but especially with um, MS or, or conditions like it. So I'm still, I'm still learning, Skype. Guys, please leave comments below if you, whatever you thought about that. Obviously, only if they're um, sycophantic and incredibly um, complimentary and, and glowing in my direction. Say what you want about him. It's fine. Um, he's, <laughs> he's used to it. He's got a thick skin. Um, take it easy. Stay safe. Subscribe. Stay kind and glass half full, as um, as Peter was just saying. And we're just going to sort of smile until this actually stops recording. So, see you later, guys. Bye bye.